So now we're going to look at the bank reconciliation. We're going to look at those things we just talked about, the adjustments, and we're going to reconcile the bank statement balance to the adjusted bank balance, and then we're going to reconcile the book balance to the adjusted book balance. Those adjusted balances need to be equal. Once we've adjusted the bank and the book, both adjusted balances should balance out. They should be equal. If not, we have a mistake somewhere. So let's take an example here. July 31st, we have Simmons Company has a bank statement. The July 31st bank statement indicates a balance of $9,610. The cash general ledger shows a balance of $7,430. And we have some additional information we'll need. So notice, again, the balances don't match right up front. That's not a problem. We have outstanding checks totaling 2417 So let's go through that. That means that we've already recorded these checks on our books. We've already deducted the cash out of our account, but the bank hasn't yet. They didn't know about it. So we need to adjust it out of the bank side to get closer to the accurate balance. A $500 check mailed to the bank for deposit had not yet reached the bank at the statement date. Again, we already recorded it, so our book is correct, but the bank side is not. There's a deposit that we need to add in on the bank reconciliation to get closer to the accurate amount. Now keep in mind, one thing to note, we're not actually adjusting the bank's records. We, we, can't, we can't go into the bank, into their computers, and adjust the records. We're just simply doing it on our reconciliation so we know whether everything is right or not. If there was an error, we would notify the bank and have them correct it, but we can't do anything ourselves. We can, on the other hand, adjust our own records through an adjusting entry, which we'll deal with in a bit. Now we move down to number three. The bank returned a customer's NSF check for $225 received as payment on accounts receivable. So it was a NSF check, the bank returned it, and that's all that's happening here. What, what we need to do it's already been reduced out of the bank side. In our books, we originally increased our cash by that amount, but now we're finding out it's not good cash, so we need to subtract it out of our book side. Number four, the bank statement showed $30 interest earned during July. So the bank has already recorded an interest in, or a cash increase for this $30, but we did not know about it, so we now need to go in and increase our cash by that same $30. Number five, check number 781 for supplies expense cleared the bank for 268, but it was erroneously recorded in our books as 240. So we record this as a $240 cash reduction, but the bank recorded as 268, and the bank is right. So we need to reduce in another, another $28 out of our book side. Number six, a $486 deposit by Acme Company was erroneously credited to our account by the bank. So it's not like the whole monopoly bank error in your favor, collect, uh, was it $75, it was a community chest or chance type of thing. It's not that situation. You can't keep that money just because the bank made a mistake. You don't get to keep it and spend it. You should notify the bank of it. If you don't, the bank will generally find out about it very shortly. You certainly can't spend the money. It's going to be taken out of your account one way or the other. It's just a matter of when. You might as well just notify the bank so that everything can be corrected as soon as possible. Because note, Acme Company is going to be a little concerned that that deposit didn't make it to their account. So they'll notify the bank if you don't. So what we're saying here is that the bank put $486 more into our account, but it shouldn't be there. It's an error. We need to subtract it out of the bank side. Here's how that reconciliation would look. Now note, there are two different forms to do this, two common forms. You could have one of them on the top, like bank side, and then book side on the, top, on the bottom. By the way, the name doesn't matter, the order doesn't matter. It's just you need to have two separate ones. You could also have these side by side. You could have the bank side maybe on the left or right, and then the book side on the other side. For the bank, we took our beginning balance, we added in the deposit and transit, because it is good cash, it needs to be recorded in the bank. We subtracted out that erroneous deposit. We subtracted out the outstanding checks. 
that were there as well, 2417. So we get a, a total subtraction of 2903, and our adjusted balance is 7207. On the book side, we started with 7430. We added $30 of interest. We subtracted that $28 extra money that we needed to take out, the error we made, and then we subtracted the $225 bounced check. It wasn't really good money. Guess what? We come up with $7,207 just like the bank side. We're good to go. Now, the key thing here is when we're making adjusting entries, the only entries we can make are the ones on our book side. We can't adjust for the bank. When we have a bank type uh, adjusting item on the reconciliation, that means that our books were already correct, so it wouldn't make sense to do an actual adjusting journal entry. Our books are correct, we don't need to adjust them. But when our books are not correct, for the items that were reconciled on our side, we do need to do a journal entry to correct it. So we had that interest revenue. Cash was added to our account, we needed to adjust for it. So we're debiting cash for $30, crediting interest revenue for that same $30. Now this other entry, they merged two things together here, just to show you that it can be done. Remember we had that $28 error where we didn't write or we wrote the check for one amount like 268 and we only recorded it in our books at 240. So we had that additional 28 that we needed to record. That's where this is coming into play. That entry by itself would be a credit to cash for $28 and we'll talk about this total amount in a bit, but it would be a credit to cash for $28 to pull that amount out and the debit would go to whatever expense account it related to. That check was written for supplies, so it would have originally affected our supplies expense, or maybe even just supplies themselves, the supplies asset if we hadn't used the supplies up yet. But in any case, we need to debit some account, asset, or expense for that same 28. The other part of this entry was the NSF check for $225. We would credit cash for that 225 to pull it out of our books. By the way, 225 plus 28, those two entries merged together. That's where we get the credit to cash for $253. And then the debit to that is going to go to accounts receivable for 225 to put it back on that customer's books. They still owe us the money. After we make all those adjusting entries, we should get 7207 that's the true amount of cash. Now the last uh, slide we have here for this section is the is a ratio, the day sales uncollected. So how quickly are we able to ex or, uh, collect all of our accounts receivables? That's all we're doing here. So we take accounts receivable, the overall balance, divided by net sales, multiplied by 365. That's what we're doing here. This tells us, uh, on average, how long does it take us to collect those accounts. And that takes us to the end of this particular section. Hopefully this information has helped out. Uh, I thank you for your time, and I will talk to you in the next session.